will be presenting the second half. Um, how many people here use AutoCAD regularly? Quite a bit of you. Wow. Um, I showed that movie at the beginning because I want to review a process in which I go from AutoCAD to SketchUp, and Mitchell Stengel will take it back full circle and we'll end up in, in AutoCAD all the way at the end. But that movie that you saw and that model that I created, I've done in under two hours. Um, I've developed a system for myself that I try to show to others, especially people I work with and manage. Since I'm a landscape architect by training, but I do apply it for architecture as well, is how you create, and since you draft in 2D AutoCAD, how do you go to SketchUp and easily create models from those AutoCAD 2D plans in a, in a relatively quick amount of time? Um, there's definitely some Ruby scripts involved with it, um, and if you went to Todd Birch's uh, excellent session on Ruby scripts, I'm going to review some of them as well. Um, but the basic premise is to really show a workflow and organization that starts from AutoCAD, goes into SketchUp, and then once again goes from SketchUp and back into AutoCAD. So first and foremost, I'm going to start with an AutoCAD plan. And this is just a smaller version. It's a park. The blue line work on the side, or purple on the screen, is uh, buildings. And this is basically the component. This is a schematic design, so it's the initial stages of our design process for our client. And this is a real world project. Um, and you can see all the line work that you have in here. You have your trees, you have your ground plan, you have a canopy structure, there's buildings in here. Um, there's benches, site furnishing, so everything that you would lay out with the precision that you use in, in AutoCAD. And the, there's an important aspect of this. If you're working within an architectural firm or a landscape architecture firm and you're not using layers, then you're in trouble. And we're all encouraged to use layers, and you can see these simplified layers. I'm not using any standards here. Um, but you have benches and bollards and canopies and buildings and deciduous trees, which is always a big deal with SketchUp because once you start putting in lots of trees, you're in trouble. Um, but that's why Mitch Stengel is also doing the large model presentation. Um, and scoring. So all these things are played out and laid out within AutoCAD and they're all organized. So all these things are on their uh, corresponding layers and that's the way you should be drafting in CAD because especially if you're going to take it through design development and construction documentation, you have to have it within that level of organization. So the first and foremost is, like I just said, you have everything organized within your layer structure in AutoCAD. And prior to bringing this into SketchUp, you also do not have any XREFs in the file. Um, and there's another level of organization in that, but if you want, I can talk about that in the lab after this presentation. One of the most important things, um, ooh, I can't see the, is to make sure that the line work, you'll see a layer up here that's called flat, light, flat work. This flat work is relatively complex. It's made of compound arcs and curves on the ground plane. It has its planters. In essence, what I'm doing is the second level of organization. And that second level of organization is I'm going to export out two files to SketchUp. The first one is just what's on the ground plane. So what's on the ground plane is your walks, is your planting areas, is any kind of crusher fine area. It might be your building footprints, though I separated them out separately in this model. And I want them, I've consistently for this demonstration, I've put them all on one layer. Now that's not the reality we always deal with with a site plan. Sometimes you have to, or, you have to reorganize your file. The reality is if I reorganized my CAD files, um, all the people would kill me. So I have to actually separate this out separately for SketchUp export. So I do work with my AutoCAD files separately in a different file structure so as to not the affect the originals. But that's the first layer of organization that you see. And that's all the flat work in the site again, the concrete. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to W block this out. I'm going to select all the line work. And I'm going to place it in this folder called insert and call it flat work. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on all the other layers and this is the third layer of importance. Most of these items are blocks. Um, the trees are blocks and AutoCAD blocks conveniently convert into SketchUp as components which is very important for the speed that you want to achieve this in. I don't need two layers here and that is if I can find them, the crusher finds hatch. 
So what you have is, again, you have your tree blocks, you have your chair blocks, you have your scoring, which is not actually a block in CAD, but it's still a level of line work that we can add and accentuate for detail within the schedule plan. So I'm going to W block all this out as well. And I'm going to call this kitchen sink because it's pretty much everything else within my site model. So the point of this is, you know, again, organization, I can't say that enough, is what you want to achieve within your CAD files prior to bringing them into SketchUp. And it saves you a lot of time. So we will start with our SketchUp file. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to import. I'm going to set it to AutoCAD. And I'm going to import this file. And the first file I'm going to insert is the flat work. But I'm going to click on my options first. And I want to make sure that preserve drawing origin is checked. Otherwise, when I start importing and exporting files in and out, they're going to go into different places. So you can see that it imported my line work. Now, you can select all the line work. Traditionally, and this used to take me hours, I started using this at SketchUp 3. And what I would have to do is you have to go heal and identify all the faces to do this. This can take, well, you can remove some time of purgatory that you might spend by doing this because it takes a really long time. So you know what I mean by that is taking the line tool and trying to identify lines. I have arcs and curves that sort of kind of don't work. Um, so I'm going to use Ruby scripts. And these Ruby scripts are available at uh, Smustard. And I'm going to review them. And I, and I apologize if I maul the explanations for them a little. Um, but there's four or five Ruby scripts we're going to use. Um, the first one is called Make Faces, and it's self-explanatory. These are closed polylines in a box. I'm going to select all of them. I'm going to go under my Tools menu and say Make Faces. It gives me a dialog box, and it made faces. Not quite literally making faces, but um, made faces. So th and then I'm going to go through these relatively quickly. You have intersect overlapping lines. So this is one solid face, but I want it subdivided into four parts, just like I have in my site plan. Now, in order to do this with the line tool, I would have to find that little black dot that says intersection. And that's not very easy to do. And sometimes it might not even work. If I select all these lines, and I go back and I go under plugins, and I'm sorry, I have a lot of plugins, but I live off of using plugins. It's intersect overlapping lines. I'll select it. And what it did was it subdivided the faces, which is exactly what I need to identify my ground plane. Um, the next two scripts, and I'm going to combine them because they do perform similar functions, but I know that they are different, is extend closed lines and close open line segments. They do two different things, but for the sake of this example, basically you're going to bring in your AutoCAD line work sometimes because AutoCAD has arcs and curves and it doesn't have true curves in it. The lines don't meet or they overlap. I'm going to select this line work. I'm again going to go to my plugins. And I'm going to do extend close lines. Created an extra line there. But what it did is it filleted or met the ends of the points of those lines and closed that group for me. And the same with delete short lines. If you look at this intersection on this curved area, these lines overlap. That will prevent SketchUp from allowing you to make faces. And you have to adjust for that. So I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to select this. And again, I'm going to use a plugin called Delete Short Lines. Oh, sorry. Sometimes this functions for me in different ways. Um, in this case, it's not doing it completely correctly, but that's OK. What it typically would do is it would delete these endpoints in these lines. But I'm going to show you how this functions within the example that I have here. So, I'm going to select this whole site plane. And I'm going to show you, if I do make faces to this now, it will process on the bottom. Now, it kind of did what I wanted it to do. But it didn't actually subdivide the faces that I want. I want all these areas to be broken out separately. And this didn't do it in that context. So I'm going to run these scripts. And this is the part that does take some practice and is a bit complex. And it is set and based off using these scripts. 
I'm going to select all the line work, and we can talk about the limitations. There are limitations to using intersect overlapping lines, but I can talk about that later if there's time. I'm going to select intersect overlapping lines, and it's going to process on the bottom. And what it's doing is it's going through all the line work and finding all the points where lines have intersections or that black dot, and it's turning them into endpoints. Um, and once it completes that, what it allows me to do is start running the other scripts around um, to identify all those faces. So you can see it created the dialog box. The next thing I'm going to run is I'm going to go through the other plugins. So I'm going to start with close open line segments. It's going to ask me if I want to save a backup. I probably should say yes. Um, I'm going to hit no. And it also tells you what it's doing. It's finding all these vertices and open line segments. <coughs> it's telling me what's resolved, what's not resolved. I will go through extend close lines. And I'm going to run that more than once because I want the value to be zero as best as I can. And then delete short lines. And it deleted all those short lines. I'm going to run make faces again. Oh, didn't do it fully. So I'm going to go back and ask it to do it again. And one more time. And hopefully this will work, but if not, we can continue with what else I will show you. And it didn't, and there's probably some lines that aren't completely subdivided. But what it is doing for me is it's allowing me to achieve having to create the base plan quickly and effectively. This traditionally, SketchUp 4 or 5, before these plugins, this would take me probably an hour, two hours, three hours. But by allowing me to do all these scripts to these AutoCAD plans to close all these scripts together, I can create a, a relatively quick site plan. And that leads into allowing me to create this base plane. All I've done is gone in and I've colored all the areas. I've push-pulled stairs. I've created the walls that I need. There's a water feature. Um, you have all these other landscape areas. So it let me create, and again, that level of organization of starting with that 2D site plan in AutoCAD to go to this 3D base plan in SketchUp will let me import the next level of information. Set it to AutoCAD. That's the kitchen sink. So you can see that it brought in all these blocks and all this information. So what I do next is, this is where the compatibility between AutoCAD blocks and SketchUp components come in handy. So I'm just going to start with these trees. I'm going to go in and I'm going to open my component browser and I have some trees ready. I'm going to select this block. What I mean by selecting it is I'm going to edit the component and I'm going to directly insert this tree into that block which was formerly a 2D AutoCAD component. I'm going to center it. And what I've done is I'm essentially going to start populating the model by just replacing the blocks with components. And that way, I can effectively create a very quick and easy way to model all the elements within the, within the plan. So again, I will select this AutoCAD block. I'll edit the component. I will select my light fixture. And it's placed my light fixture. So I can go around this model. And essentially, what I'll eventually create is this model. And again, the, the biggest drawback that used to be was actually creating the site plan. Because inherently, we're supposed to draft in CAD in a very specific way, organizing your layers, using blocks when you're supposed to use blocks for repetitive items like trees and pedestrian lights or buildings. You can then, just using this process, and I'll, I'll give you an example. I created, in a period of six weeks, we had to design 12 parks for a client overseas. And we modeled all of them, including in terrain um, and all these site elements that were custom that we modeled in SketchUp. And we were able to use this. And not just myself. I used a, two, a team of two other people. And because they're using the same methodology, 
We're saving people a lot of time and heartache and being able to create, in essence, what you see are these kind of site plans. And then also the buildings, and the buildings themselves have repetitive elements, and I'll show what I mean by that as well. So here's a hand-drawn sketch of a building in, that was hand-drawn. It was converted into an AutoCAD drawing. You could see with all the windows, and it's just a section, but using the same methodology. What this diagram is showing is that within this building, there's repetitive elements that can be turned into components, so you can just componentize this AutoCAD section. I use the same methodology of using those same exact Ruby scripts. I find all the faces. It's probably redundant. You only need to find the faces for the elements that you want to create repetitively, but I did this building first without figuring that part out till later, <laughs> um, which would have been easier. Um, you take it, you make it a vertical, you take it off the 2D plane and put it into the vertical space. You start creating these components. These components right here turns into this balcony and deck. You're just pushing and pulling. And then you start inserting it repetitively into your AutoCAD um, section for the building. You can do this with even bigger, more complex pieces against the ones that are identified. And by then, you eventually are building a whole model that way. Um, and again, so at that point, you're using for both the site plan and for the building the same methodology. And before I, we go into Mitchell Stangler, does anyone have any quick questions about that? Yes? Yes, mm -hmm. in AutoCAD, if you're going to take your blocks and rotate them or whatever, but those rotation factors come in when you're rotating Yes, actually they would. So if you have a bench that's sitting in one direction and then you want it to sit in the other direction, the component will take that into account. If there's, if there's a front end to the component, it's facing one way. When you bring that into SketchUp, you can def definitely designate your component to be oriented in the directions that you want. And in fact, that's actually a really important point because there's another workaround with that. Um, because sometimes they don't happen that way, but there's ways to deal with that, and I can explain what that means later. Now, sometimes you bring in uh, elements from, from AutoCAD, and it starts to drop in line. Um, it's because it's, in AutoCAD is like Windows, for example. We've got all the time Windows, bringing Windows in, because if, if you create like block, sometimes you have to explode stuff before you bring it in. Otherwise, you're going to start uh, losing some, some elements. As far as I, I think I understand what you mean, when I, when I do have, uh, we'll go one more. You know, so with these, if you mean these line works, so what I have to do once I've done edited this tree is I just delete that additional line work. Is that what you mean? No, no, no. <coughs> Especially when, when, you, when I bring elevation, and I'm doing exactly like you do, you know, I bring in elevation, but then when, when the windows were windows, um, as, a, as a block, you know, or W block, you know, you suddenly have to, some lines are starts missing. I don't know why in, 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 in translation. Um, and I noticed when I exploded everything, but then, you know, if you exploded, you're losing ability of doing what you're doing, replacing this That's with, right. with your own block, you know. As far as I'm, from my experience, I've, I, I try not to explode anything that I bring in from AutoCAD that's a block. If it's losing information in that line work, then hopefully I can fill in that blank with the components that I'm going to use. But I can, I, I can talk with you about that after the session. I've run into problems in that area with dynamic blocks. Hmm. Using dynamic blocks, sometimes there's a lot of intelligent quote unquote information that AutoCAD is built in uh, to, the, to that. And when you import them, sometimes that, some of that, it, it, they, the blocks start to look different. Like doors are open instead of closed, or windows are odd size, and goofy stuff like that. Sure. I'd, again, I'd have to see the specific because I could I could definitely talk about some of the bugs that I encounter yeah. with this. Um, but part of that is also making sure that the block is. I and mean, I'm not implying anything with that, but the blocks are definitely created um, the correct way. Because some people, you'll create a block. It's not on layer zero in the process you're using it. And, and let me emphasize that point. It, it really does come down to the the correct methods that we're supposed to be using for drafting in CAD. And there are those habits that we're supposed to follow. I'm guilty as anyone because I'm definitely not that anal. And sometimes people take my AutoCAD files and they're like, oh, you're fired. No, I'm just kidding with that. Um, I noticed that these are 2D trees. And then on your final rendering, you're using 3D, very high poly What is your kind of transition step? Do you have any recommendations? Because it's kind of time consuming. 
So, so with these trees, I can go ahead and do the same thing. I can go ahead and delete this tree. And I can go back and I can import. There should be 3D trees in here. Water, sorry. Um, yes, and, yes and no. It, it does depend. So I'll take this tree. It's a 3D tree. Not exactly the prettiest thing, but um, I, I am basically replacing that tree once again. It depends on where you are in, in, the, in the design process. If you're in SD, the initial part, uh, part of schematic design, and you just want to get the idea for spatial relationships, use 2D components. By the time you want to start creating animations or renderings, then you start plopping in the more high-res stuff. Um, but you don't have to do that. There's ways to work with those trees at high resolutions by controlling your layers. And that's the and thing. If you have everything on layers, you can turn them off and continue working with your model. Very beginning, when you're managing layers in CAD, you said that you don't work in your original file. You actually do a save as of your AutoCAD, and then reconfigure your layers into flat work layer. That's right. And other layer. Okay. That's correct. Yeah. So the, again, the beginning organization is you definitely don't want to use the same files that people are using to create um, design development or construction drawings or what they need to, you know, printable drawings with measurements on them. Um, in that case, you definitely want to save your file. Because SketchUp, in order to use it for SketchUp, you do need to refine the organization. And particularly if you have XREF and utility information and all these things, you don't want that stuff to come into your drawing. You want to keep it clean. Go ahead. And as you're going through the process from schematic design to final design, the SketchUp model is going to be Can you, can, you, can you make refinements to your model? Absolutely. Um, but that's something I can show in the lab if you'd like uh, separately. The Ruby scripts that you used in the beginning, are they your personal or are you downloading them? No, all the Ruby scripts are found on smuster.com. Um, they're, again, they're lifesavers. I cannot function using SketchUp without these Ruby scripts. And I don't recommend, if you're doing a lot of um, design work in, in a firm, you really do want to use them. Make the firm pay for them if you have to purchase them. Hey, I'll take one more question and then I'll let Mitch go. So, uh, You're using just basic AutoCAD. Have you used any of the other like architectural packages from AutoCAD? I haven't used ARCHICAD. Um, no, not ARCHICAD. But AutoCAD, yeah. architecture. I have not. I've used more landscape architecture like Civil 3D and um, Land Development Desktop. More, okay. not with the other ones. Well, Land development desktop, how recent? Um, I have an, a, a version that's a year or two old. Um, and I, it, it still functions well as far as, and I use that more when I'm doing terrain modeling, but that's another separate whole presentation. Okay. And thank you very much. And My name is Mitchell Stangle. I'm a mechanical engineer. and. Um, I've been using AutoCAD since uh, AutoCAD 2.6, so I have a long history with AutoCAD. And in about 1993, we decided, because my work is all about industrial plant design. We do processing plants. So I do a lot of work in mining facilities, crushing facilities. And we started um, doing all our work in 3D, mainly because we had so many problems coordinating different disciplines. We would get I remember one time we bought all the equipment, and between the architectural layouts and the structural uh, engineer, there became a new column line that nobody transposed between the drawings. So all the equipment we bought was five feet short. It was all made out of stainless steel. So in the field, we lengthened everything. So problems like that cost hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of dollars. So we decided to use 3D in until probably either 2002 or 2003, I did all the mo we did all the modeling with AutoCAD. And I don't know how many people have tried to model in AutoCAD 3D. A few people. OK, so you know some of the problems. I started SketchUp mainly because my staff wanted to buy $10,000 per seat of software, 3D software. <laughs> and I had, um, at that time, about four 
really high quality designers. They all had associate's degrees. They'd all been in the industry for a long time. All very good 3D designers. And I found SketchUp, and they actually, after a year, were kind of irritated with me because I no longer did hand sketches and said, here, do this. I took SketchUp and did the models. And what we would do, and the process I'm about to show you is the outcome of that, because what I demanded of everybody and what we did is the same thing we did with the AutoCAD models. We took AutoCAD models, we designed, we created our construction drawings from the 3D model. We never took the 3D model apart. We use the parts of AutoCAD which allow you to do that, which are D-View. Well, I'm gonna, I was gonna ask people, has, does anybody know what D-View is here? Okay, do you, have you experienced a 3D clip? Yep. Okay, and so I'm gonna go over a process and what we do still today, we model everything in SketchUp to a pretty great to a pretty fine detail, and I'll show you some of my work at the very end. And we use AutoCAD to create construction drawings. We never give up the SketchUp model. To the last day and to when I'm doing as built, I go back to the SketchUp model, record all the information in that, then go out to AutoCAD. So, this is a little model, and I'm not an architect, so no one really be critical of me. A friend of mine bought a firehouse, and they wanted to turn it into a um, two-family duplex. So I volunteered, they measured it, and I drew it up and changed it into a two-family house. So I'm going to just go through the process right now of what I did. And at this point, I don't care. This process is independent of any type of textures you put on this model any type of colors you did on it, it doesn't matter. When you go into AutoCAD, you can change all that. So the first thing you have to do, I guess I, I need to look here, is you have to export the model to 3D. Ooch. Sorry, I can't see over there. Okay, and I'm gonna export it into this file. And this is kind of important. You need to decide what type of AutoCAD you're using. Um, I myself am stuck on 2006 because I have still have clients who can't deal with 2007 to 2008. So I still use 2006, so we export to 2004. I seldom export dimensions, our text, our construction geometry, almost always faces and edges. If you do no work, if you add no line work to your models that depicts something important, like we use uh, line work for handrails. So I want line work to come out. It makes the model a little bit bigger. The SketchUp people will tell you you don't need to send line work out, but we find it's helpful. So I export this model. And if all things go well, it'll be quick. It is. And then what I'm gonna do is go to AutoCAD and I have a blank file. I, I have a write-up for this, but it's five pages long, so I didn't print it out, so you'll get it. It was on my Mac, but I don't know how to keep that from going to sleep. Um, so what you need to do at this point is we always XREF that model into a drawing set. And what that's traditionally allowed us to do is control line weights in each drawing set, so we can change disciplines. So if we do a demo set, all the demo line work would be heavy. We do the new walls would be a heavy, different drawing, different AutoCAD drawing, so we would bring it into another one. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go into the model space, I'm gonna type XREF. Anybody familiar with XREF? Yeah, yeah that's a lot of positives, that's good. So I'm gonna attach this file I'm going to go up here and hit open. What we always do is we always put the model at, wherever it comes in at zero, zero. And it's really important. Later I'll do a little demo about modifying the SketchUp file, but if you move the origin in SketchUp and re-export it, it will come into a different place in AutoCAD and none of your drawings will work. And it's a really common problem. I've screamed at people at the last minute on many a job 
when I thought they destroyed the whole file and all they did was move the origin of SketchUp file, export it, and all our drawings were blank. <laughs> and we just had to go back and re-export it. It's not a big solution, but you know, when you're trying to print them out at the last minute, it's hectic. So the same model. And you know, you can see 3D views of it, and we're all used to this in AutoCAD. It's kind of worthless, <laughs> difficult to model. <laughs> I don't like working with it myself. But what we do do here is we'll bring up the layer manager, and I'm gonna kind of randomly do this right now. I wanna just make a point. So all the line, all the layers that I had in SketchUp, I now have in AutoCAD with this file name, which is a file we saved it as. There's a system variable, which I'll show you in a minute, that you have to toggle in this case. I'm gonna go down here and just make all these Layers, let's see if I can do this red. And I have a couple existing layers. I can see them. Yep, there and there. I'm gonna make them a different color just And I could go on and layer this based on how I really wanted my architectural drawings to look, but of course I'm not an architect, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm hoping that that's the okay button. Okay, apply. Okay, the really important thing, and I've had, myself, I've had this problem, there's a command in AutoCAD called Viz Retain. If this is equal to one, then any X reference will keep the layer properties you assign to it in this drawing. So you can use the same model in multiple drawings and reassign the layer colors to correspond with how you want the line weights to turn out. And it's a, uh, it has to be one. If it's not one, then every time you bring in the model, you have to redo the color sets. You have to do, change what's on, what's off. All that has to change. Likewise, the first time I, let me go back here, the first time you bring in this model, you may have layers that are on or off, what they'll come from SketchUp, if you've got stuff hidden, hidden it'll come out as off. So you just gotta clear all that out. And any layers you freeze at this point, if VizRetain is one, will stay frozen every time you re-export the model and bring it back in. Okay, so I'm set. Now I'm gonna to go to a paper space layout tab. How many people in here are dimension in paper space? Oh, a few, that's good. So this method is highly dependent on uh, dimensioning in paper space. It's because you're dimensioning a model. If you go into model space and trying to dimension, it's very difficult to do. So what I'm going to do here, I'm gonna go zoom extents. I'm gonna create, my icons are not where they used to be. So, I'm gonna go here and turn this off, turn it back on. <laughs> Give me one second, I just wanna talk, oh, I'm not gonna do it. Does anybody know where, uh, I'm looking for the uh, viewport menu, which is not on. Yeah, I, let me see. I'm stubborn. Under view? Yeah. <laughs> and then it'll ask you how many viewports you Oh, yes. See Thank you very much. Okay, one new viewport. So I'm going to draw in a viewport. There's my model. I'm going to go to model space, and I, now I can manipulate this model. So if I go to plan, I could use the little icons up there, but I'm just gonna type in plan. And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And I'm gonna go hide. And I have a lovely picture of the roof of this building, but that's not what we want. We want a first floor plan. So AutoCAD, I believe in 2004, created a command called 3D Clip. And if you didn't work with 3D in AutoCAD, you probably missed this. Um, 
And again, Autodesk and their great wisdom. <laughs> I'm going to start this over because it's kind of fun to watch. <laughs> they decided that when you do clips, the building has to be upside down. <laughs> And when I was doing this presentation to my employees, they said, why is that? And I said, I have no clue. But it's been this way forever. Also, I believe in 2006 they made it so you can pan in and out on this model. Um, and what I'm doing right now, this is the front clipping plane. This would be a back clipping plane. So I'm just going to take this up. And there is a way to do this precisely, but I don't have the time to do this. And I can show somebody, anybody wants to know, I can show you in the lab. Because we usually, when industrial sites, we don't have floors, so we always go from, we write on our drawings, we're clipping from 98 foot to 121 and a half, 121 and a half up to here, so that we get full coverage, because you can miss things otherwise. So these two guys also control which line I'm adjusting, although you can graphically also do it, so you can just go grab them. Uh, this pan is just what it, implies and zoom. And then these two buttons are probably the most important because they turn on and off these clips. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. It gives you kind of an instantaneous picture of what you're doing. I actually do not need the back clipping plane right now because there's nothing behind me. So I'm gonna turn on the front one and you'll see that now I have my building. So I just, once I got it set, I X this out. Uh, if you touch this right here, you're going to do a 3D orbit, and you probably don't want to do that in a plan view. And to get my model finally set, I'm going to go click 1 to 96. So I could zoom in and zoom out on it, and then come back here and click this again, and it will put it to scale. It should put it to scale. Oh, no, that's the wrong box again. No, it is the right one. I don't know. Let me uh, get out of model space and I can correct it. If you click on the viewport, and yeah, we go back in. This is kind of like your small lines. Oh. Well, I apologize. I'm going to go back up. Sometimes this does behave this way, which is, it's just kind of like um, very inconsistent. And there should be a box over here if anybody can see it that says, under miscellaneous. Yep. Scale, custom, nope. One up, thank you very much. This is really not my normal angle to look at the computer. Okay, so. Okay, so I also, when I did this, moved my model over. So now I'm going to just be careful and not, uh, I'm just going to pan over. And I'm going to get out of this. And if you're really nervous like I am, what you do is you go over here and touch the viewport. I mean the, yeah, you know, the viewport. I mean paper space. Oh. I'm not getting the viewport. It's my problem. And so I go back to properties, and I lock. The best thing to do is lock your viewports, and then you don't accidentally change them. So I would go normally on a full job and set up all my viewports, but I just want to go in here and and. Um, quickly um, do a little dimensioning, because I just want to do the outside of the building. So I have 1 to 96, which is an eighth inch, and I'm just going to come down in here. I can go down. I'm going to get the, not the siding, but the edge of the building. I could turn the siding off in here if I wanted. Put a dimension, 69 feet. I didn't measure the building, so no one should criticize the accuracy. <laughs> I'm just going to put a couple of dimensions down here. Okay. So, 
my floor plan, I can go ahead and annotate it. I'm gonna show you a finished file of this job in a second, but I just wanna go and create one more and just, I'm gonna create another tab. I'm gonna just go through and do the second floor. Now again, I, I went in, I'm gonna have to wait till it regenerates itself. Okay, I'm gonna unlock this viewport because I can't change the model, I mean the view of the model if I don't do that. Go into model space, type my 3D clip, and I'm gonna zoom in, zoom in a little bit. They come up and put that. I could zoom in and see where the windows are. But I'm going to say that's good enough. And I'll make sure both of these are on. Yep. Okay. So now <laughs> I got to do what you see. What you're seeing right now is a floor joist in this model. And this is another lovely part of AutoCAD is you see what you see. It's all wireframe. So I have to type hide if I want to see what my view really looks like. <coughs> HI. Why won't it do that? Okay, there, there's my second floor. Because I have a surface in there that's a floor, the floor. And until you type hide, you can't, you see it. So paper space. And my dimensions didn't quite work out because I have roof overhangs. But that's the general idea of the two, of setting it up. And I wanna, I'm gonna act like I'm uh, done with my drawing. Like we were here for a long time. And we'll go back here and you should recognize this as a SketchUp JPEG. Because we basically in our drawing stop. If we're doing any type of perspective drawing, we don't do anything from AutoCAD anymore. We use the model. And here, Let's see, let's get rid of this. And, you know, just an annotated model. I can go through the rest of them. Nothing too fancy. This would be government work. Well, <laughs> how, how did you get the elevations out of there? I mean, you're just looking at it in, in side views and all yeah. that? Just using the standard models. And you know what we do, I mean, in, a, in the work I usually do, we do uh, sections all the time in elevation. So, but I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna put this on the third floor and I just wanna go back to the model for a minute. So, I live in Massachusetts and we kinda can have violent weather occasionally. So if I can find the layer box here, I'm gonna turn off my roof. Okay, and I'm gonna find myself a small plane, I think would work nicely. <laughs> Let's see, let's put him in here. Wants to uh, fly into the plane. I'm gonna come up here and put him into the second floor. You might as well give him a little bit of a twist. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to re-export my model. It's going to replace it, and I don't, I don't have that model open. I have never opened it in this whole presentation. I don't really care. The, some of the problems you can get into at this point is you can um, export it in metric units or export it in you know, feet, and you're really pulling in architectural units, so you can get problems in scale if you're not careful, but all that's easy to fix. So if I go back over to my AutoCAD file, <coughs> yep, manage XREFs, and it tells me this little check with the red mark there, it tells me I need to up, update it, because it's since that the model changed that it was based on. So if I reload this, <laughs> I have a little bit of a plane problem now in my <laughs> model. And I think I probably, if I got elevations, yeah, there it goes. <laughs> but that's a good thing. You want to know about that. What you do want to know about it. And in all honesty, the, the biggest problems I've had in drawings from other consultants is that people don't coordinate 
all their drawings. So they'll change a floor plan on one floor and it's not shown somewhere else. <coughs> and if I get a set of drawings and this building is made three foot shorter and there's a dimension line hanging out here, you call up and you say, there's a problem with the dimensions, please correct it. But if, and everybody's had this experience, if this one's three foot short and the rest of them are eight foot long, you know what the contractor based his bid on. <laughs> and you know what he's gonna pour the foundation to. And you know who's gonna pay the difference or who he's gonna come afterwards. You have a question? Yeah, have you ever thought of not exporting? What, not exporting and just doing it all in SketchUp? And what does AutoCAD offer you that you're needing to use to, you know how you have layouts now and you do the exact same thing? With I'll show you something on layout in a minute. I actually think layout ultimately is the right way to go, but it's a little difficult today to do dimensioning and stuff, but I'll show you a drawing in a minute. So I just wanna show you a couple other things if I can get this other computer to work, because I have them all turned on. So if you give me, a, is there any other questions where we're at right now? It, people basically understand the process, yes? Yeah, he's asking if line weight control is limited. Uh, in a certain way it is, but it's all based on how you layer it. So if you layer it in a way, <coughs> you create enough layers to control the line weights you want, it's not a problem. And it's not uncommon for us to go over in 2D space and draw over something we wanna emphasize. And sometimes when you go through a surface model like Auto, I'm a SketchUp, you'll see things below because you didn't put the detail in the wall to cover something up. So you'll cover that up with a 2D rectangle or 2D surface. What about like pushing wall types, <coughs> you know, that kind of stuff where you actually, you know, have CAD information? You mean like drawing a wall detail? Like if you had a, well, you had a masonry wall and a stud wall and one's hatched and another. Well, I mean, we would model those to scale, but we would probably do all the hatch work in 2D space on top of the model or you just draw a 2D detail. In paper space. In paper space. Now, is this siding, is, you know, this is physical siding? Or I, I drew lines across it, because I knew when I went into AutoCAD, I didn't want to have to re, I didn't want to deal with hatches. I was just being lazy. Well, because if this is hatch, you're not gonna see it, right? No, you can hatch on top of this. You can easily hatch on top of it. We do that all the time with grading. And, we used to do it with grading. Now what I do is I make grading in SketchUp and I export it, but it can become too busy. So, can you switch this over to the Mac for a minute? So there's a write up and it'll get posted, I hope, where I go through all the points. There's, there's a lot of little fine details to doing this process. Um, and it might be a little, look like a little too much, but I think it's the right, personally, I think it's the right way to go. This is a mop, this is a plan that I've done for work I do. And I'm having slight display problems, but so this is a facility that was built in Texas and in uh, South Carolina. And the whole plant is modeled in SketchUp. These are PDFs of the AutoCAD file. So you can see there's quite a bit of detail. Hmm. I'm waiting for SketchUp to come up. There it goes. And there's the model. You said it was designed? Yeah. What I was responsible in this job, I worked for 
uh, CH2M Hill, and I was responsible for all the general arrangements on this job, all the process documentation, the process design. They did all the equipment purchasing, and I designed all the duct work and all the shoot work in this project. So. So when you do your interference checking, it's all visual. There's yeah. That you, there's no plug in or anything available to. To catch that kind of stuff. You need to ask these guys in the back. We used to, they had this little neat thing when you pulled a component onto another component and they hit each other, it dinged. <laughs> <laughs> but I think all of you, all the architects did not like it, so they got rid of it. <laughs> they complained about it. <laughs> but you know, there's sometimes I didn't like it either, but there's a lot of times I did. But yeah, it's all visual. But you tend to see it when you move through the model. I mean, I had a client, and this was before, when the viewer was just available, before the free product became available. And I gave her the model. She's a civil engineer. She took it home for the weekend. And she called me up on Monday and she says, this is so cool. Now make the building four feet wider this way. Move this column lay eight feet bigger this way. And it was really excellent because she really looked at the, the design. So back to preview for a minute. Well, I think I'll go. You want to see the number of layers on this? Sure. Um, I'll show you. If I can get back to it. This model's a little slow, and you might, if you come to, when I talk about large uh, models tomorrow, you might see this model again. Let's see if I can make this big enough. So there's the beginning of the layer list. Groups. What I do is, if you, I don't know if you can see the whole thing, but I use, we started, and you know, I, Daniel will argue with me, I don't really care about standardization, but you need to work up some logical system. And we use numbers for process, and when I design processes, I try to make them start at the beginning at one and go through the end at some number higher, so you can follow the process of the plant. We use S's to in front of things that are structural, so we can limit them out, and we use M in front of things that are mechanical, and A in front of things that are architectural. And I even started using BB for base building, because I had an architect work for me for a little while. So, but the layers just help you keep it organized. And I don't think you need to use layers from the first time you start doing line work, but I do think you need to do layers if you're gonna be organized and you're gonna go to bigger models, because it just makes your life a lot simpler. But I'd, what I tell my employees, too, is you don't need to use, if layers inhibit you, don't use them initially, but you need to go back and use them. At some point, you've got to integrate them into your process. So i got one other thing I want to show you, and that is, I actually believe, let's see, preview. Do we have multiple viewports in uh, SketchUp? Excuse me? Do we have multiple viewports? No. What you can do in SketchUp is make scenes. And what you can do, this is a, a plant. I'm going to show you the difference in the AutoCAD. I'm going to have to do this manually. My monitor is trying to be too big, so I'm trying to make it smaller. Yeah, way too large. Okay, there you go. So these are drawings that were done with that problem that guy in the back was talking about, layout. And I actually think these have a much nicer appeal to them. I go back to the beginning. What about size of this layout file? This is, this, the model is 10 megs. And the layout file is five megs. And, you know, the model I showed you before is 36 megs. Um, I would honestly say it's not quite there because it's a little difficult to dimension yet. But I'm hoping that soon we'll get something to dimension better. Because uh, they're all smiling in the back. No. But. <laughs> in my experience, you know, because you don't, you don't add any trees and the people and the cars, this is what really starts to make this 
uh, models bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, you just have to have a strategy to figure out how to deal with those, and you don't always need them to do your drawings. Right, the, the, the problem is if you've got three days and, and you've got two blocks to do it, you don't use too much, you know, you're just charging ahead. Right. And then in the end, you cannot even open this file. <laughs> I've never had a problem not opening them. I have a problem closing them sometimes and inserting into them. Right. There's a question in the back. I was just wondering the, the various you know, drawings you're showing. What's the, the audience for each of these? I mean, when you... I, this was a job that I started to do for, a, um, for Old Castle Minerals. And they were going to modify this whole plant. It was the plant management. So the people who had the money. Well, this is really preliminary, and this is a site that started being built in 1850, and no one had ever measured it. So we walked through and measured the whole thing, and our output was the model, and then we went through and estimated a $10 million expansion into the plant. So this is very preliminary. I'm not going to get the quality of line work and the quality of those the previous drawings I showed today with SketchUp. But the clarity of these is way better. People understand what they're looking at. And that's what I like about it. So I, I personally haven't resolved how I deal with the, giving them more information. You know, I'm hoping I get uh, better tools in the near future. <laughs> Can't. <laughs> you see a point in time where you'll be given a 3D model to a, a contractor and let them take the takeoffs off of it? I, I would love it. But I, I don't know the construction industry. I mean, I still have. I had. A, I uh, worked on a theater building in Williamstown that doesn't have a straight wall in it, and we were hired to do the coordination on the mechanical work. And so I modeled all the structure, all the mechanical work, and they had 900, no, a thousand RFIs on the structural steel, and they wanted to bring in the structural engineer and go over the model. And he uh, said he didn't need it because he could visualize fine in 2D. <laughs> Can I yeah, go ahead. Just to tag into that question, there's a city in Colorado. Um, they're not requiring it, but they're asking consultants that are working on public projects to provide them with SketchUp models so that they can use it to oversee the work for any of the site design or building. Is that Boulder? No. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the thing I... <laughs> yeah, right. The thing I'm, I'm seeing is I get more and more clients who would never touch CAD, who I can give a model to, and will mess with it, look at it, and talk to me about it. And so for client review, it's really good. What we tend to do now, uh, client review, is um, get a go-to-meeting session where someone can look at my computer screen and you just use the model and walk through the design. Well, you know, one of the things that I'm, I'm feeling is that you know, a lot of the drawings we do are just really set up for litigation. I mean, in other words, <laughs> when it's not built right, we could show that we had the dimensions, we showed we, we gave them the information. Half the time, I go out in the field and they don't build it like I drew it anyway and I dimensioned it. They sort of come up with their own approach and they kind of build it as a model in the field. Yeah, I know. I, I kind of feel the same way. They, give me, they call, tell me I messed up and I go out in the field and I go, so where is everything I designed? Right. This right. is not there and so it's usually not a problem. It may be a problem on my part that I didn't convey what I wanted to get built correctly, and so that I have to own. But they often don't build it even if I do convey it correctly. Well, so. the whole process of doing the, the sections and dimensioning those sections, it, it just sort of arbit arbitrary to give them information. And, 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 and the end result is they don't really know what they're doing until they actually get out there and start fooling around with it. Yeah. I, on one of these jobs I took, because the shoot work's just big, heavy pieces of metal that are fabricated, and I sent to the fabricator a dimension file of SketchUp, each page with each shoot. And after I, it took me an hour and a half to do it. And it was probably, his contract's probably $2 million. And he called me up and says, thanks, that's great, now I know what they all look like. <laughs> and he had full dimension drawings, fabrication drawings, so. In the back. Do you ever do anything with like construction phasing or like the, the installation processes using SketchUp, like to break the layers down into this goes in first, this goes in second? Yeah. Cool. So the question was, do I ever use? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you just said exactly how you do it. You just got to layer it. You and 
tomorrow I'm going to talk about large models and we're about done with time, but basically there's a way to nest layers and it's really using groups and layers and it's very simple to do that. And using Outliner, you can easily move stuff back and forth and make copies of it. And as long as they're components, it doesn't really affect your model size much. Yeah? Ever use models uh, created by 3D scans in the field? Um, I have not. I know people who have, but I haven't used, pulled them into SketchUp. We get a lot of uh, 3D stuff from other programs like SolidWorks, and we've pretty much figured out how to get those into SketchUp. We always clean them up because they come in as... 10 or 100 meg files and we make them much smaller. So, I mean, that's all discipline about making smaller models, or making large models but out of smaller components. Do you find your workload is less, like your time spent on the project is less doing these sketch processes? What, what I find is we spend about half our time modeling, or probably a little bit more, half our time designing and modeling and a little bit less than half our time doing construction documents. And I'd like to do zero time doing construction documents, like you said. I'd like to just hand them the model and say, here, you know, maybe I gotta put a few dimensions in it, but ultimately I'd just like to design it and give them the model and have it be locked down where they can't move anything. Well, we're close to that. I almost think that if there's a resistance in the industry just because we're so used to doing dimension drawings that we're reluctant to do that. So. Well, people like to charge per sheet, too. Right, right. <laughs> uh, earlier today, uh, in the modeling smart session, we talked about the outliner yeah. tool in SketchUp. Do you use that? All the time. But we're out of time. Tomorrow I'm going to talk about that at 1 o'clock. You want to? It's a very powerful tool. Thank you.